again, the market tracking negatively today. What do you attribute that to? Continued international risk aversion? Uh, that, yeah, to, to some extent that will be true. Um, though, of course, we did see uh, increased turnover in, uh, in today's trading, which actually was high by 30 million Kenyan shillings just to close at uh, 385 million traded today. But uh, overall, the index, of course, dropped, uh, did drop 27 points. And uh, uh, this is basically attributable to, you know, uh, ongoing uh, slightly political wrangles and then, of course, mm -hmm. the expectation of high inflation. And, of course, all this is playing out, you know, to, to hurt the market. I mean, let's just uh, unpack that a little bit. Ongoing political wrangles, uh, the growing threat of inflation. These are said to be things that will continue to impact the market negatively. But given that elections are a year away, can we expect the market to be subdued for the next year? Is that really possible? Um, it is, uh, I would say, maybe more of uh, going forward, wait and see, because uh, what's holding on right now, of course, there is the goodwill, of course, that... Uh, Definitely, the, the whole focus is on the co implementation of the constitution. And uh, we as analysts actually do believe that there's the goodwill amongst the majority of the politicians to actually fully implement the constitution. Mm -hmm. And uh, once that is done, of course, uh, the significance of political risk won't really be there. Because uh, we'll be then, of course, waiting for a very peaceful election. And uh, I don't see really uh, that impacting negatively on the market. Active counters today, Carb Asset gaining 4% on the share price, Pan Africa 2.3%, Kenya Re 1.5%. What drove these counters? Uh, I'll just maybe note it to you that uh, the first two top gainers, you mentioned Carb Asset and Pan Africa, uh, these are very closely held shares and uh, they sort of, uh, you know, they are sort of illiquid shares. So we don't see, normally see them, uh, you know, trading uh, large numbers. And uh, I would say that maybe it's, uh, it's, it's, it has to do with the uh, demand playing in, uh, in a, a big role. Mm -hmm. Demand vis-a-vis, -vis, of course, uh, very little supply. But of course, Panafri, what they did announce was good because uh, the dividend is, is, is just uh, too handsome. Uh, you're talking of uh, actually uh, three shillings. And uh, of course, a uh, bonus of one to one, uh, it, uh, it's basically what's driving the counter. And if you add just the liquidity I've talked about, that's basically what's helping mm -hmm. Panafrica you know, go up. And uh, Kabasid, of course, they are giant in the, in the industry, has got, uh, you know, production of, uh, you know, gas. Uh, and uh, that, of course, is, they, had that, they have a larger market in the East right. African region. So going forward, everybody expects them to perform better. Obviously, Safaricom, which is the driver of this market, they were trading in the positive today. They had a few gains. But I want you to explain that to me because Safaricom's got a few challenges. Direct competition, very aggressive strategy coming in from Airtel. That's one component. And then recently news of Safaricom pursuing a legal challenge on uh, a service provider over the issue of number portability, which is quite a sensitive one in the Kenyan market. How are they uh, doing well in the midst of all these factors? Um, okay, the legal challenge, I don't see it as a big risk, but uh, what the risk is that uh, definitely the price wars are going to continue for a, for, for a while, and definitely, you know, they are, uh, by the time the reports they are fully uh, results, definitely we shall be able to see a dent onto their earnings because, uh, they, you know, the price war kicked in since last year, around mm. August, and uh, that is definitely going to have a, a negative impact on their, on their earnings. So uh, going forward, I don't really see it, uh, you know, being able to sustain mm -hmm. above three, four shillings and, uh, and maybe 25 cents. In fact, it's very difficult for it to actually trade comfortably. We haven't seen any significant demand above four shillings. So it's quite surprised that, okay, today it was trading a bit strong, but uh, I would say any demand above four shillings right now looks very weak. What's happening on the fixed income side? Because that's where we're generally seeing a lot of positivity. Uh, and I'm just concerned also about uptake, whether people who are not quite sure about the equities are moving into fixed income. We've seen general uh, trending upwards for the Treasury bills. And we're also seeing the yield somewhere in the region of 8 to 11 percent, just depending on how long the tenure for the paper is. What's your view? Well, my view is that a number of factors have come into play, at least. Uh, and, uh, We've seen actually even the fixed, in, fixed income uh, market, basically the bond market, uh, slowing a little bit, uh, especially in anticipation of uh, uh, a rise in interest rates. 
because uh, you've seen uh, recently there's uh, you know there has been a, a huge jump in the in the in the prices of oil and uh, that's a very big component component of the of the of the consumer price index so we've seen inflation going up to actually a high of to stand at 9.19 percent right now and uh, of course with this is that many investors will be expecting higher interest rates and uh, of course with that we've seen the government not very keen uh, on uh, you know you know raising interest rates and uh, so participation right now is very is very dull mm -hmm. and uh, I, I'm not going to see actually uh, we might not even be able to see actually full subscription for for, mm. for, for some of those papers are coming up.